Hey there, Go community. This is Grant Henry, a.k.a. Stemage. The guys invited me back again this year for their annual Game of the Year episode. We'll find out which game made the tops of their lists, as well as the overall pick for the Gaming Outsider. It's time to risk it. Let's bake this biscuit. This is the Gaming Outsider. Greetings, programs, and welcome to episode 276 of The Gaming Outsider, a video game podcast with a focus on our incredible community. It's Monday, January 6th. I'm your host, Scott Clark, and I'm joined, as always, by my fellow co-host. First off, a guy who has a brand new job to talk to us about, Mr. Zach Parkerson. Oh, man, do I? You do? What are you doing now? Oh, I... well, No longer selling coffee, right? Yeah, well, no, I am still selling coffee. I just, uh, I, I, I run a cafe now for uh, a no-kill animal shelter has put a cafe into their shelter... Uh, which I guess is the second time that's been done in the country, and nice. I got that started from nothing. Very cool, man. Well, congratulations, and thanks for being back, uh, coming back to the show. It's been been quite a year. Also joining us, who was gracious enough to let me borrow his Oculus Quest this past week, Mr. Chris Behrensmeyer. What's up, man? Not much, man. You're welcome. Yeah. You I might not it. get it back for a while. I am, I am enjoying the hell out of that thing. Uh, it's a lot of fun. I miss it greatly. Do you? Well, we'll have to get together and play some more. We got to play some more. Uh, keep talking, and nobody explodes because my God, is that game fun? Oh, oh it's, it's so much, so much goodness. It has been a long time since I got to talk with you guys in front of a microphone. I missed you. It's been too long. Yeah, I missed you. Could too. Could agree more, man. I'm excited. Hey, I missed you. I, you know, I texted you earlier today. I missed you. I know you did. That was very, that was very yeah. sweet, man. I'm excited. It is a brand new year. I appreciate everyone's patience while we took a couple weeks off uh, to kind of recuperate over the holidays. And it is our annual game of the year episode. And as is tradition, we have a very special guest joining us. The guy behind the band Stemmage, as well as Metroid Metal and a bevy of other music, as well as the music for a little-known podcast known as The Gaming Outsider. It gives me great pleasure to welcome back to the show Mr. Grant Henry. Grant, what's up, man? Oh, not much. I'm pleased. I'm pleased to be back. I look forward to this every year, so I'm stoked. Also, I will send you my address, and you're welcome to just return that Oculus Quest to me when you're oh, okay. done with it, Scott. And then I'll just I'll close the loop when I'm when I'm done. Is that cool, ooh, ooh, Chris B? Ooh, that's that's a tall order there, son. Maybe. Oh. <laughs> have you played Have you played anything in VR yet? Uh, just just PSVR. Okay. Uh, and and I have a I have a Pixel. I got the little Daydream headset, which actually works pretty well. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I I borrowed a PSVR and played some stuff. Have you um, played Keep Talking and Nobody Explodes? I have, and it's a fantastic game. Is that on PSVR? Yes, it is. It's on. It is. It's on kind of everything, really. If you think about it, you only really need a an iPad in front of you that no one can see. Uh, True. You can, you, everyone can play it, but I, the the VR. I actually played it on the Daydream on the on the Pixel phone. Uh huh. Um, we played it so much that my phone got super hot, like crazy, crazy warm. We had super to just stop hot. stop playing. Yeah, super hot. Played <laughs> that too. Uh, <laughs> no, but great game. Love that game. It's, Man, it's we a, I, I took it over to a buddy's house and we played that game for hours, um, well over halfway through the game. That game gets in, intense. Uh, I don't know how far you got, CB, but there are these modules for those for the people that don't know what this game is. It is a bomb defusal simulator where you have one person in the headset uh, that has a physical bomb in front of them that you can flip over and look at it and has all these modules on it. And everybody else has an instruction manual, like an actual paper document or a PDF on your computer that gives instructions on how to disarm this, like what codes to punch in and which switches to flip and which wires to cut. So you actually have to work as a team. It would be genuinely like a great team building exercise for for corporations and stuff. You know how they always like do these team building things? This would be a perfect one for that, I think. Um, but CB, it, it gets crazy later on because there are these... I don't know what they call them, like busy switches or something. There are modules that aren't a puzzle that you have to solve, but you have to give them constant attention in order to keep the bomb from exploding. Like one has a dial on it that if it gets up to like 100%, then the bomb explodes. So you have to constantly going back to that and flipping and, and hitting a switch to bring it back down. And then, then you'll get a bomb that has like three of those on it. And it's just, it's just in, intense. 
It's <laughs> it's crazy. We had we were at my buddy Nick's house, and some of the puzzles. You know, you, you, it's helpful if you write something down to kind of keep track of the different things because the puzzles get intense. He has a daughter that's like four, and we had her little chalkboard easel right next to us, and we were he was taking notes on it while we were doing this, and I was telling him what to cross off, and no, 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 get keep that one back there. It was hilariously fun, and if you're playing with the right people, <laughs> I can't wait to play that game more. Zach, you need to come up here so we can all play it. It's it's a blast. Yeah, I've, I've played it. I, I'm uh, excited you discovered this uh, game because it was like a YouTube sensation, like what four or five years ago. Yeah, it was. It's, it's, take, it's been out for a while. Took the world by storm. Mm-hmm. So, so, just, it's it's cute that you're so excited about it. <laughs> I know. Well, I, I honestly I didn't know it was on PSVR. Otherwise, I would have got it a long time ago. Uh, but I didn't discover it until CB brought it over on a, on his quest. And uh, man, it's it's fun. Yeah, I remember seeing some of those YouTube videos where the guys were trying to because once you get towards the end, the timer is very short and you have to be very specific with solving the puzzles and yeah, it's a, it's a great game. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Oculus Quest, having a blast with it. My friends actually texted me last night and said, hey, come over to the house. Bring the Oculus Quest. I was like, I'm in bed already, guys. Sorry. So it's a lot of fun. <sighs> Just stealing us. And, and after all the new games we put on it, too. I know. And I actually was going to put some more games on it for you, but I didn't know how I could because I didn't want to use your credit card. Um it's linked to my buy a... PayPal account. Oh, is it? I, so I should have. I should just PayPal you some money and, and done <laughs> you could have because... just pay, done it anyways. Well, because I played Pistol Whip on. Um, we had Stoy and Pat from the EXP cast over, and I played Pistol Whip on his Rift, and uh, I had such a good time with that game. I was going to uh, buy that one for you, and as well as the third episode of Vader Immortal because I played through the first two episodes of that, and I wanted to see how that finishes up, but. Uh, yeah, I like how I buy the second episode. I have yet to play it because you have my <laughs> Oculus. It's it's pretty short. That that game got me a little nauseous though too, which is weird because you're not like flying or anything. But I definitely the 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 VR is affecting me more recently than it did in the past, which is kind of weird. It's because your was it your VR old. or was it the dark side of the Force? Well, it wasn't just Vader Immortal. It was uh, it was other games too. The like, climb. Like, oh my god. The Screw that game. I know you, I mean, not, it's not a bad game or anything. I just, I, it, that game makes me sick to my stomach. It's, it's literally mountain climbing, Grant. Mm. And where it looks like you're on a, you know, you, you, it, you get vertigo playing that game. It's, wow. it's insane. My brother uh, visited him and his girlfriend and I had the PSVR and uh, I had recently, I put my, I put my wife in uh, to play Moss, or just the demo of Moss, the little mouse mm-hmm. game, yeah, diorama it's a game. game. No motion you have to deal with there. You're stationary, and it was a good thing for her to try. My brother and I used to love Wipeout, so he really wanted to try Wipeout in VR. It was a terrible idea. Yep. He he wore it for a, he he finished the race, took it off, and proceeded to lie flat on the floor for about an hour and a half. It to, it wrecked him. Like it's and he could not understand why he wasn't feeling better. And I, I've always heard about this, how it can have a lasting effect for several hours when you get sick. It really, it really jacked him up. I felt bad because I, I wanted him to try these other more chill VR experiences. But no, nah, he wanted to wipe out in first person. Drama. Uh, yeah. and that, that was a little much. Yeah, totally. And he gets car sick. He's a car sick guy. I knew this. I should have, I should have warned him. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, the man. recipe for disaster there. Yeah, totally. So. Yeah, I had a, a game that I reviewed called Touring Carts, which is basically Mario Kart in VR. Which I didn't think because it's very, the graphics are very simplistic, but there's something about driving in the cart and being able to turn your head at the same time that just throws off my bur- my brain just can't wrap itself around it for some reason. And I, I, I felt queasy to my stomach for the, like a good portion of the day after that. It's kind of nuts. Hmm. So I used to be one of those guys that didn't get uh, seasick or car sick or... VR sick, and now apparently I am one of those guys, and that sucks. Now, now you're an old dizzy man. Yeah, unfortunately. But <laughs> so anyway, how was your guys' uh, holidays? Zach, did, did you? I know you did, uh, you didn't get to come up here, and you were setting up shop down there. But did you? Uh, did you at least have some nice time with your with your wife? Sure. Yeah. I mean, it was a it was a very busy week. Yeah. So. Sounds like it, man. Well, it's a bummer you yeah. can't. You weren't able to come up in January sometime, so we can uh, play some games. Yeah, I'm definitely. Gonna make some time. I gotta come up for a New Year concert anyway. There so. you go. Well, it was it was really some... funny because we had a planned a day to play games together. It was gonna be just you and I. Yeah. 
And that turned into mm-hmm. CB coming. That turned into um, Spencer. C- Spencer coming, Stoy and Pat coming down from Milwaukee. And then you said you couldn't come and they just came anyway. And we. Well, it's, yeah, that's we, awesome. We had so much fun that day. I, I mean, just no agenda, All no right. like, we got to get this game done. We just played whatever and you know, drank some beer and ate some pizza. And we need to do that more often. I had so much fun that day, CB. <laughs> Uh, that's cool yeah don't rub it in guys don't rub it in at all <laughs> other other than wheel of fortune oh yeah we, we that was one of the first things we did is uh cb and i decided to sit down and help each other with some achievements you know getting some uh, a thousand achievements on some of the games that require two people to do and one of them was wheel of fortune and uh <laughs> so so the funny thing with that is cb had already started the achievements on that game well before he had like something like 700 of the a thousand achievement points in the game I sat down and started playing it, and then he sat down on his TV and decided to finish up what he was trying to do. You would think that since I, since that he started a long time ago, that he would be finished much faster than I would. He actually, he actually got to a thousand points like ten minutes before I did. It became a race at the end there, which was kind of fun, and nobody cared because it was just he and I. But it was, it was fun. Also, for for those out there listening, Scott has the worst luck in the world when it comes to bankrupt and lose a turn <laughs> there was one think, there was one game i did five in a row where i either got a, a bankrupt or a lose a turn like i didn't even like <laughs> no that's it's mathematically possible but not very probable it was, it was insane cb what about you how are your holidays busy 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 between uh going on vacation and then immediately hitting the holidays and I had to work Christmas Day and New Year's Eve. So wow. lots of lots of not sleep. I imagine. I imagine. Grant, what about you, man? Did you have a good uh, good time? Yeah, I had a good break. We were supposed to leave town and then the weather didn't didn't let us. So we ended up kind of laying low and seeing family around here and uh did a little uh Skype gift exchange with my family back east, which was fun. And uh my wife gave me uh Fallen Ooh, order for nice. Christmas. So I'm in deep, boys. Something tells me That's... that some tells me that game is going to come up a couple times during this this uh, this podcast. I believe I don't know, so. We'll have to see. <laughs> Perhaps. I, I Perhaps. think you guys actually had colder weather yeah. than we did on Christmas Day. It was insanely hmm. balmy here on wow. Christmas Day. They actually said that for the first time since the I want to say Roosevelt uh, administration. That it was warmer on Christmas than it was on Halloween here. This Halloween oh, wow, we had what crazy. like six or seven inches of snow. <laughs> first, first time in over a hundred years had snow yeah. on Halloween, and it was kind of crazy. Wow, it didn't feel like Halloween at all. It felt like Christmas, and now we're at at Christmas. It felt like fall. It was it was kind of nuts. So. Well, guys, it is so good to be talking with you again, but uh, we're here to talk about some games, so let's go ahead and jump right into the week's news. I know I said we were going to talk about news, but we're going to really skip it for the week because uh, we got a lot of stuff to talk about for the Game of the Year discussion, but I did want to mention very quickly because we're going to kind of talk about 2019 as a whole in terms of uh, things that happened in 19. So what in your mind was the most important news story, announcement, or release that happened in the last 12 months. Grant, we'll start with you as our guest. Uh, This is may not be the most important, but I think this is sort of a sort of a sign of the times kind of kind of event. But Xbox uh, or Microsoft put out the digital only version of the Mm -hmm. Xbox S, which is really telling to me. So my my parents recently got a car a new car. My wife recently got a new car and neither of those cars have CD players in them. They just don't make cars yep. with CD players in them anymore normally. And so that, I mean, that is, if that's not a death knell for the CD as a format, finally, I don't know. I don't know what is, uh, you know, vinyl surpassed CD sales for the first <laughs> time in 2019. Uh, so like that's happening. And then on the game side, you have Microsoft putting out a digital only version of their Xbox, knowing that game pass is a huge, uh, such a huge deal, and it's a great value, and they're expecting people to just use that. And I don't, I don't think that the the new Series X is going to, you know, be discless or anything. But I think that's a sign of the kinds of things to come, right? Getting, taking a a, a format that is 
only been around because it had to be uh, because it's either that or cartridges. And phasing that out for a with a with a hardware release, I think, is really kind of a big ballsy move. So I think that's just sort of a that was sort of a surprise to see. So I picked that. That's a good one, and I I love the comparison to the car. Um, I remember the first time I bought a new car and it didn't have a tape deck in it, and I was like, "What?" <laughs> yeah, that was that's how old I am. Zach, these see they used to put music on tapes. They were called cassettes. Hey man, the last the last car I had, <laughs> I had a. Not only did it have a tape player, but I had one of those. You had to put the tape player in, and the cord connected to a CD yep. player thing. Yep. I had a yep. like, yeah, I had a portable CD player like suction cupped to the to the dash of my car, so that that would it would bounce less or whatever than sitting it on on the seat of your car. Yeah, yep. my uh, my truck. I had a pickup truck that had both a CD player and a tape deck in it, so you could do both if you wanted to. And that tape deck never got used once. So no, yeah, I. Why would it? It was 99. That's why it wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, so, Ooh. but it Careful. was there. My my first car actually had an eight track player. Oh, did it really? Wow. Did, did eight tracks actually have Incredible. like when it would switch a track, it would do it like in the middle of a song. Was that true? Or was that a myth? You... I couldn't tell you because I, I could never find eight tracks to play in it. So I, had... I just knew it was there. Somebody who played eight tracks told me that if you would play it, play a song and the song went longer than the actual track. It would you would hear the click over to the next one while the song was playing in the middle of a song, and like that concept just blows my mind. Could you imagine listening to a song and having this distracting like click in the middle of it? I don't know. That but it's that probably, is... probably not distracting because you get used to it. You'll hear the version without the click, and you'll go, "What? Whoa, this That's is true." <laughs> kind of like watching uh, you ever watch a movie that uh, you used to watch on a on a VHS taped off of TV copy, and you know right where the commercials are supposed to be. We've done that. <laughs> several times yep. my my first copy the original copy i had of tron was off the tv so i was expecting all of the fade outs and toy commercials and yep. stuff and yep. yeah it's very strange to not have them there still strange i try to be sly when i was a kid i would actually wait for the commercial to come and i would pause the recording and then start it back up again after the commercials ended so that when i went back to rewatch it i wouldn't have to watch through the commercials or fast forward them so there was always like this little like just hitch hitch there <laughs> instead but yeah, you could always see like the weird fade out. Uh, for me, it was the movie Inner Space with uh, Dennis Quaid and Martin Short. I used mm. to know exactly where that. And then I was even more blown away when I watched it on DVD and there were parts that they had edited, you know, for content or for length to be able to put on TV that weren't there. I was like, felt like I was watching deleted scenes. It was, it was kind of cool. Anyway, that was a total weird tangent. Zach, what did you think was the most important yeah. uh, news story in gaming this year? PlayStation Crossplay. That's a good one. I think that's uh, significant. It's also, you know, speaking to uh, the yeah, the times. That's very indicative of the times mm -hmm. we're in. You know, like the the barriers are breaking to break tear down that well, wall. They're starting to, right? I mean, it's still not everything. It's still just select games, right? It is. I think it's a. Uh, wasn't it in October where they announced that they cracked it open to everybody, so now anybody can get in on crossplay, not just. Right, Select titles. right, but the developer has to make it make that happen. Like it's right, yeah, 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 of course. So if the developer doesn't feel like but doing that, they don't have to. But I have a feeling they will right, want to do that. Right. That's a good one. Keep their games alive longer. Yeah, I don't know. It's I think that's very significant news. And it's all Phil Spencer's doing. I think. Hmm. Look at you giving credit to the Microsoft guy. Yeah, well, credit where credit's due. I like it. I like it. And uh, I think that was a significant story. I really want to know what it was that took to flip the switch to be able to, quote unquote, crack the code, like you said, or figure it out. Or were they actually just holding back because they didn't want to play ball? I think they didn't want to yeah. play ball. Yeah, I think that I remember the Rocket League guys saying, we're ready. Mm -hmm. Like, we can yeah. push this button today, and be, but they don't want to play. So we're just going to do it everywhere mm -hmm. else. And then, I, I mean, I guess maybe the pressure was on uh, by basically everyone at a certain point, And they just decided that it was, it was time to do it. I mean, if you think about it, they're, they're putting a lot of Sony games are coming out on PC, too. So you know, isn't Death Stranding coming out on PC? Allegedly. Allegedly. Right. Well, it was announced for PC, and everyone just okay. seemed to have forgotten mm -hmm. that. Okay. So, so you know, they're going to want to get PC and PS4 to be able to talk if they're going to keep doing that kind of stuff. So it makes sense to do it down the road. Uh, I don't, I'm glad it's happening. I agree. That's big, CB, big what about news. you? 
Uh, for me, it is definitely the Ninja Mixer deal. Mm. So um, when we're now throwing around supposedly upwards of $50 million for one guy to switch from one platform to another, just, just for, for the people like, hey, cool, I, I want to watch this guy play some games for a bit. Like the fact that we now have esports players that are being paid like ridiculous amounts of money, it definitely brings some validity to our favorite hobby. Uh, so for for me, like that was a big step in the right direction. Do I may not necessarily agree with the fact that paying somebody that much to play games, but I mean it's the dream. So hey, we play that we we pay that much to people to throw a ball around. I I firmly believe that they're well overpaid too. So you're right. I also right. think that Ninja but, is not in fear of concussions or anything either. I mean, I, yeah. I, I still think that sports. I could get carpal tunnel. Yes, gets carpal tunnel and severe head trauma is is apples an apples to apples comparison. Uh, you're right. You could get carpal tunnel, but I and, and I'm not I'm not arguing that that uh, football, baseball, basketball players uh, should be getting paid as much as they do. But I think that they they're putting their bodies at risk a lot more than somebody that's uh, that's streaming is my is all my point is. But so I mean it, it it's definitely a a brand new world for streamers when those kind of numbers are getting thrown around. Yeah. For I I know he's he's a very well-known face but there are better players out there. Mm-hmm. He got in at the right time, man. He he really did. So uh, and 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 he's a local boy, so yeah, he's from the Chicago area, isn't he? Yep. Yeah. So, I well, what a shame that he sucks then. Wow. What? Sorry, feisty mood today, I guess. Why does he, Why do you think he sucks? <laughs> huh? He's well, he's just horrifically unfunny. Oh, almost distractingly so, and he has seems to have lost all form of self awareness. That's all. Gotcha. I have not watched him. I think he wears quite possibly the most hideous suits ever when he does press conferences. Like that just super like go. shiny suit. I'm like, ugh. He's gonna he's gonna hear this and destroy our podcast, but Yeah, great. It Thanks, was worth guys. it. It was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm just still shocked that streaming has taken off like it has. When I was a kid, I never in a million years would I have thought that people would be making millions of dollars playing video games in front of a camera for people to watch. That's it's kind of awesome and sobering. Uh, so, yeah, that's a good call, CB. For me, uh, my story is just about streaming games as a service in general. Uh, you know, the announcement of Google Stadia, however you feel about that. Uh, but, you know, Project X Cloud, which is on the horizon, and even Game Pass. You know, where people, these kinds of services, I think, are the, are huge for the industry. Because as much as we all have our, our consoles and we're going to buy into the next console generation, we're getting to the point where we don't need them anymore. Uh, where the internet is going to be uh, latent enough that we can just stream these games from somewhere instead of having to have a physical disc. And, uh, you know, we can pay a subscription service, you know, the Netflix of video games. We've we've got that with Xbox now. Uh, For 10 bucks a month, you have over 100 games at your disposal. That's just kind of nuts to me. Could you imagine as a kid being able to just throw 10 bucks and have all those games all you wanted? On top of Fortnite, which doesn't cost you anything to actually play, uh, it, it's just mind blowing to me. I had to save up. I sound like such an old fart right now, but I had to save up and save up and mow lawns and all this to get one fifty dollar game that would last me for a couple weeks or maybe a month, and then start all over again. And now we've got this, and I, I think it's awesome. What do you guys think? Um, you know me, like I, I'm a firm believer in physical media. But that being said, the more I tool around with Project X Cloud, I like having it on the go, uh, especially with the fact that like I could have a disc in my system at home and play that on oh, the wow, go. Oh, wow, I didn't even know that. Yes. So there there are a lot of cool things coming with it. I I hate the fact that the industry is moving towards that because, as everyone knows, I'm a diehard physical media guy. But it's it's very nice having those um, 
whether whether or not I I firmly believe more in one streaming service than another is another thing. But also, <laughs> Game Pass man is impressive. I I wish Nintendo and um Sony would get on the same boat. So I got to tell you, I checked out PlayStation Now on our break. It's a pretty robust service. I've never used it. How does that work? It's, I mean, it's just like, it's very similar to Game Pass. I mean, you can't, you can only download PS4 games locally, but I played through all of the Force Unleashed, Mm -hmm. little to no issue, and that was a lot of fun, and it had all the DLC and everything, too, Uh, but they had uh, PS4, PS3, and I think there were even a couple PS2 games on there. There were a couple PS2 games on there, so that's a pretty, for 10 bucks a month, as, I mean, it's it's pretty much the same service as Game Pass, I'm saying. Except you don't get first party games day and date, and that's a huge selling point. To be fair, <laughs> that's right. Of course, no, of course, huge. yeah. So I'm so excited. I played four hours of The Outer Worlds and said, nah. "Really? Yeah." I'm, I mean, I'll get back to it eventually. That's actually one I would like to get back into. But if 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 I weren't distracted by so many other games, I was trying to get caught up on over break. So. All right, so we'll we'll come back to news in our next episode. Uh, rest assured, there's lots of things happening, but we wanted to kind of keep it uh, succinct for this episode since we anticipated being a long one. And before we get into our Game of the Year discussions, CB, what can you tell us about Patreon? So Patreon, uh, I, I apologize wholeheartedly. December was a rough, rough month. Um, I have a lot of things planned uh, for this month. Uh, we're going to be doing a VR episode as well as working on a peripheral episode and a few other things that I've got in the hopper. Uh, but our most recent episodes was we had our spoiler cast of uh, Control and the Tron uh, original movie and legacy review. And I know a lot of people are still asking about the Glee episode. <laughs> I, I promise we're going to get there. It's it's just finding the time to sync up that we can all watch some some episodes of Glee. I already watched the whole first season, man. I've seen every before or recently. Uh, within the past six months. Okay. Yeah, we gotta do it again, Scott. I'm not watching the whole season, but I'll watch a couple episodes here and there. <laughs> Specifically, the Britney episode. I I have such a crush on Britney. Like you have no idea. <laughs> Stop laughing at me, Grant. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, oh, if any of those episodes sound interesting to you or you'd like to just help us out and uh, support the show, head over to patreon.com forward slash the GoCast. Your funds do help us keep the show running as well as uh, do some giveaways. Uh, we don't keep any of that money for ourselves, guys, and that is a promise I've made since the very beginning. Uh, if we spend any money on ourselves for games, we give those back to the community uh, via a giveaway. So uh, um, it really does help us out, and uh, we want to do as much as we can for the community as a whole, so we really appreciate it. With that, let's go ahead and jump into the From the Outside In topic. All right, it is time for Game of the Year discussion, and I actually am really looking forward to this part because what we did or what we do every year is we do a prediction segment, and we predict what we think is going to happen in the coming year. And what we do is we kind of recap and look back at our predictions from last year and see how well we scored and see who got what right and who got what wrong. And uh, now, Berensmeyer, you weren't here last year. Owens was on the episode last year. So you're going to be reading Owens's um, predictions that he made and see how well he did. But then you'll make your own predictions as well. So I'm going to kick things off. My my first prediction was that the next Assassin's Creed game was going to take place in feudal Japan and that there was going to be an offshoot Assassin's Creed game set in Australia. While that did not happen, I still firmly believe both of those things will will happen at some point in the near future. We're definitely going to see something about Australia. It was referenced too heavily in in, uh, Odyssey for that not to happen. Isn't all the, aren't all the rumors, um, Vikings are next? Next, yes. Yeah, it's not rumors. It's it's true that it will be Vikings. Mm -hmm. Okay. They even had a name for it, didn't they? I, uh, I believe it's Ragnarok. Is it? I believe well, that's still a rumor, though, right? Like U- Ubisoft has not said it's Assassin's Creed Ragnarok. Correct. Yes. Correct. Okay. So I got that one wrong. Uh, the next one, I came. I was close. Uh, I said that. Uh, yeah. I said that the next Call of Duty will release a campaign. However, it will have a standalone battle royale mode, so you don't have to purchase campaign mode. You can just download it if you want. Uh, well, the next Call of Duty did have a campaign. 
but it was not a standalone Battle Royale mode. Although, does Call of Duty Mobile count? That was Battle Royale, right? No. We're not doing half. We're not. We're not. No. No, no, I no. mean, it's a standalone Battle Royale mode. You don't have to purchase the campaign to well, play Call of Duty. Yeah, but it's also not Battle Royale. It's not a Battle Royale mode. It's every mode. I will, I will award you half a point in my That's book. Ridiculous. <laughs> I don't think Zach's going give to give me a half a point. So, so a, quor- a quarter point. <laughs> I think we had this debate last year as well. Like, <laughs> do we do half points? I think it's more fun if you don't do half points. Grant, you are the deciding factor, man. Do I get a half point? Do I get a quarter point? Do I get no points? What did we decide last year? We have a precedent. Do we not know? Do we not remember? I don't remember. None of us went back and listened to last year's. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we did Grant, half points. you can decide. I think that... I think that you can't do half points. You have to do percentage points. It's got to be 0. 0.6 points, 0. 0.4 points, right? <laughs> so if you're mostly right, but not all the way right, it's like 0. 0.7 points. If you get a little morsel of, of truth in your prediction, uh, 0. 0.2. So, I gotta, so now, we have so a grade, now we have a grading scale for our predictions. <laughs> What's that? We have a grading scale for our predictions, so he said. Yes, exactly. So, so I get a 0. 0.2 on that one, yes? I, I, would, I mean, I'd give it a point, too. It looks like a point, two to me. All right. But, oh, yeah. Lord. And my third one, I actually got one right. I said that Final Fantasy VII Remake will not release in 2019, which was 100% true. It does not come out until March. Although that wasn't like a, that wasn't a hardcore bold prediction, probably. Uh, that was probably a safer bet, but. So yeah, I got yeah, one it's point. about as softball. Or, it's about as softball as my first prediction, so. I understand, which was the, the last of us would get delayed until 2020. Yeah, speaking of softball, that was, <laughs> you can't call mine a softball and not yours a softball. Hey. But you got that one. No, right I didn't. Yeah, sure. I said I said they're both softballs. If you if anybody yeah. thought FF7 was coming out in 2019, they were incorrect. So you got that, you got one point there. What else you got? My second prediction was that a new Splinter Cell game would be announced with Michael Ironside in the role of Sam Fisher, and it would be Sam Fisher's final Splinter Cell. Yeah, I think we were all kind of expecting a Splinter Cell announcement of some kind. I don't know if we were, if I would have predicted as in depth as you did, but I was genuinely surprised we didn't get one. Well, I remember I was trying to be specific. Yeah, yeah. I, I really didn't see a new Splinter Cell coming. The, the, there was like that hope when what was it? Ubisoft like tweeted out something. But oh yeah, I forgot about that. Where it was, was just th- it was just the image of Sam Fisher, and it said like something in Latin or something. So there was there was the hope that it was going to get there, but yeah. Do I get a point one point because he's in that mobile game? No. Uh, I will. I will. <laughs> I will award <laughs> Zach point two if if you get point two for a mobile game. He's getting point two for a mobile All game. All right. All right. Fine. Yeah. That that seems fair. Uh, and then my my last prediction was that Warner Brothers Interactive would announce the start of a DC shared universe in video games that would include an announcement of both Rock City's Justice League as well as a Batman game from Warner Brothers Montreal. Talk about specific predictions I had. Yeah, and none of that. You don't get any point points in that one. No, but what a beautiful dream it is. <laughs> Can I say I just love the gumption behind that prediction? That's like... <laughs> You should have just named all the cast and everything of the game. <laughs> and all the all the uh, voice actors for the animated series will be reprising their roles. Yeah, I should have just gone for it. It'll be out March twenty fourth, two thousand twenty. <laughs> <laughs> it'll right, so later, it'll later be you... ported to uh, PS five and Xbox. You know, uh, Series X. I should have just said that at the time too. Yeah, I definitely went a little bit more vague this year than I did last same here. year. Yeah, same here. Yeah. Uh, so that gives you 1.2 points there, Zach. Uh, Barons Meyer, what did Owens predict last year? Uh, Grand Theft Auto 6 would be announced and take place in Chicago. That didn't happen. Nope. Nope. I have, have we even gotten an official word that Grand Theft Auto 6 is coming? No, but I can't imagine it wouldn't. I just... Yeah. Th- there's no way that that's not going to happen. Okay. Uh, and his do they need it? No, considering they're still raking in cash on five. Mm-hmm. Also, now on Game Pass, which is crazy. Yes. Um, his other one was no new consoles announced at E3. That I mean, part of me wants to say that's correct. I think that's right. It's wrong. 
Well, so oh, are you talking about what like, was you know, Miko or something? The Intellivision Amico was announced at E3. That is new console hardware. Man, I, I, I think he still gets a half a point. I, I will, I will I give he, him a half a point. I think he gets a full point. You're you're betraying the spirit of the prediction, CB. It's it's a new console. It'd be like if Atari came out of the woodwork and be like, "We have a new console coming out." A new console was announced. Well, but we it's a new console that we're only showing off in a back cubicle of E3. Right, and we knew it, and we knew about it before E3 happened, so it technically wasn't unveiled at E3. And I think that's what he was. Yeah, I know. By him saying announced. I think he still gets the full point. Okay, we'll give him the full point. All right. Agreed. So, Grant, what were your predictions? I had a couple, or a couple or three here. Uh, at least five games will have cross-platform support for more than just leaderboards. I mean, this was talking specifically about the PS4 cross-play stuff, because I think this time last year it was just one game. Wasn't it just one game? Wasn't it just Fortnite? I can't remember. Even- I don't even know that happened. I don't even think Fortnite. Maybe maybe it wasn't. Fortnite was there yet. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't know. But yeah, got nailed that one. There's at least like ten or twelve now, so that's cool. Uh, These are like nineteen points for that. Yeah, (laughs) nineteen points for nineteen games. (laughs) Thanks, Zach. Appreciate it. Um, uh, For Switch, we will get genre or game specific Joy-Con designs. That did not happen. No, it didn't. Yes, it did. Uh, It did. It did. Ring Fit. Oh man. I mean, oh, no. that's a point two right there. <laughs> yeah, that's, no, a, that's a point no. two. I'll take, I'll take a point. I mean, I, I, I give you a half a point on that one because that, that is actually specifically designed for that. But the, but the Joy Cons themselves aren't designed. Correct. You can use any Joy Con in that. Yeah. I think he was talking about the Joy Cons themselves being specifically designed for a game in terms yes. of like either their aesthetic appeal or use. Like a Joy-Con would be different and slide onto the Switch that would have different buttons or some other different configuration for for the game. More not uh, not not peripherals to put the Joy-Con into, but I'll still okay. take point two if you want me to give me point two. Uh, number three <laughs> was Splatoon will be out before Animal Crossing. That was wrong. Uh, that was my hail mary. But uh, yeah, we don't even have a Splatoon three announcement, do we? Yeah, but whatever. That was, this is last year. I don't know. <laughs> um, uh. Yeah. So 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 basically, it was a three way tie. Because unfortunately, one point two CB didn't get uh, didn't get he wasn't here last year. But it was a three way tie between me, Grant, and Zach with our one point two <laughs> points. <laughs> Sweet. So so the real question is, who if we had to give somebody the edge here to have the better predictions, whose point two was stronger? Was Grant's point two stronger, Zach's or mine? With the Sam Fisher, uh, the Call of uh, the Call of Duty, or the uh, the contr- the Switch controllers, I don't really know. I, I, we're gonna have to give it to CB. I say, no, I'm. I honestly think Grant's was the strongest. I think Grant's was the strongest because his one point was far superior to yours. There you go. That yeah. So Grant, you win well, the predictions this year, man. Nineteen point two points. I'll take it. <laughs> it's not, see, it's not, see, not bad. See, <laughs> see you next year. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Well, that was fun. I'm looking forward to doing that again next year to see uh, how well our predictions paid off. So let's go ahead and go on to our actual predictions for 2020. Um, and Zach, let's start with you. What's your first prediction for the coming year? Well, right off the bat, I just want to go ahead and predict that Warner Brothers Interactive <laughs> will announce a shared DC <laughs> video game universe. <laughs> <laughs> That'll kick off the announcement of Rock City's Justice League. Is that really your pick? It is. I I I pulled the Batman game from the from the prediction. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was my concession to myself. <laughs> I believe so strongly that this is such an incredible <laughs> idea that I will keep predicting it until it happens. <laughs> now you sound like me when I said they were going to bring back Ninja Gaiden. I still believe they will announce a Batman game alongside it, but I'm not putting that on my official prediction. Oh, man. I'm going to laugh really hard if that gets announced at E3. <laughs> I'm going to laugh if they announce that and don't announce Justice League. Hmm. Okay. That would really that would really sting. What's your next one? Um, secondly, uh, EA will announce an open world Star Wars planet hopping adventure. Okay. I like it. 
Will this be set in the uh, Skywalker universe or uh, Knights of the Old Republic or something completely new? Well, yeah, you know, I don't want to get too, I don't want to cut myself <laughs> any points by getting too specific. No, 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 you don't, you, you're, uh, what you said, I'm just, I'm just discussing now. I'm not actually looking to alter your prediction. What you said is your prediction, but. No, I think, I feel like everyone writing in the Star Wars universe has a big, uh, well, trying to be PG about it. They really enjoy the, the t- period, time period in between episode three and four. Mm-hmm. When the Galactic Empire was at its height. So probably then. That makes the most sense too, because you can kind of get into some lawlessness, maybe in a big deal, big way. Sure, kind of cool. Remove Jedi from the equation. Oh, interesting. So it's just in that yeah. universe, but no lightsaber to be found. Yeah, yeah. Well, you might come across like a Jedi or something, but I don't want it during the the height of the Galactic Republic or anything. Gotcha. I would be down. And then, yeah, wouldn't that be? Oh, yes, that would be pretty exciting. And then my final prediction is that Horizon 2 will be announced as a PS5 launch window game. Hmm, interesting. Hmm. Well, we're supposed to get a PS5 announcement this week, aren't we? Like the official Sony's supposed to come out and give us the name. Like we don't know what the name is. And some, some that... details, kind of like Xbox did with the uh, Xbox Series X. So that would be the time to, to announce it. You could get that one right right off the bat. Lock it in. Yeah. I think that would be such a strong way to start your console cycle. I mean, what would be a stronger Sony release? Because Last of Us will be out before that. Mm-hmm. It's too early for God of War. I would assume it's too early I would, for God of War. I would have whipped Insomniac into shape and gotten Spider-Man 2 out, personally. Do you, do you really want them whipped into shape, or do you want them to take their time on that thing? I would I would be like, don't you, know, you don't even have to change the map design. Just... Put in a new story, knock it out for the PS5 launch, because I don't think you can get a stronger contender for people than their highest selling first party title. That's a really interesting thought. Just using the exact same New York map, and yeah, you you might lose some critical points, but you are gonna you're gonna sell the hell out of that thing. Yeah, who knows? Maybe see that. maybe your Warner Brothers game will be announced at E3 as a launch game. Hmm. Perfect, both of them same day. All right, Chris, you are up. What are your uh, predictions for 2020? Um, first off, uh, our our Lord and Savior Todd Howard will sh- oh, grace God. grace the E3 uh, stage and reveal uh, more info on Starfield with gameplay footage. Okay, um, boy. That, that On one hand, that seems like super low-hanging, easy fruit, because of course they're going to talk about Starfield at E3. I, I, they have to talk about it. But that's why I specifically put in gameplay footage. Okay, so in order for you to get the point, there has to be gameplay there footage. There has to be gameplay footage. There's not going to be gameplay footage. I think there will be gameplay footage. I don't... We'll see. I, I think Bethesda needs to crawl its way out of the muck as best it can. That's a good point. I think we'll see... Uh, Elder Scrolls 6 footage before we see Starfield footage. I think we'll see Starfield six. before 6. Yeah, they already said Starfield's coming out before Elder Scrolls 6. Yeah. I don't know. That's but, an interesting but, thought, but in order for you to get that, you've got to see gameplay. Have to see no, gameplay. N- not cut scenes. Not... He'll get point two. <laughs> Probably. No, 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 no. <laughs> We're saying it right now. They release a mobile Starfield game. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you an opportunity to alter it if you want to because if there's no gameplay, you get zero points. Okay, gameplay or extended cutscene footage, like lo- that's, longer well, that's, longer that's than guaranteed. longer than a minute. Okay, I see. Okay, I man, I just feel like without the gameplay footage, it's almost a guaranteed point. That's all. Because what else do they have? Cutscenes. Uh. Okay. Well. Fallout right. Fallout 76, more stuff. All right. <laughs> trying, trying to make a joke here? <laughs> Maybe. Um, I, I firmly believe there will be hands-on access to at least one of the new consoles at E3. Like, not, not just closed door. Like On the floor? Everyone. On the floor. Oh, that's mm. interesting. That's, that's a pretty bold one. I think there'll be, so. I think there'll be hands-on access of both new consoles at E3. Uh well, do we even know if Sony's going to show up? We don't. Oh, wow. That's so, a great question. 
comment. Yeah. So <laughs> they're out at the end of the year, so I figured like hands on at E three doesn't seem that mm-hmm. far fetched. But the bigger question, like, yeah, he said, is if Sony's going to be there. Is Sony going to come back? You're right. Do they need to come back? Yes. So, well, I mean, I, I do we even have a confirmation that Microsoft will be there? Well, because now with well, they're they're off they're off campus already, right? So, but just with the fact that they keep growing their EXO shows, mm-hmm. are they going to start pulling the state of play thing? So, we'll see. And the, my final one will be Tunic will finally get released on console well, this year. <laughs> All right. So at least he's got a guaranteed no You don't point think Tunic there. is going to come out this year? <laughs> I'm not convinced that game's real. That, their, believe it or not, their Twitter has not done anything since like a month after E3. What's like they, they have been dark on the rock. For a long time now. That's, that's really weird. Because wasn't that like a big announcement at, during the press conference, during the Microsoft? That was one of the, the big 50 that Microsoft announced. And there has been zero word hmm. on that game. Interesting. And, well, I feel like it went a little bolder than you did, man. But uh, we'll see. My first prediction, Rare is going to bring back the Perfect Dark series, either as a remake or as a new title in the franchise. I don't know, man. You you say it, and I believe it. Yeah, yeah. I could see that happening. I, I didn't. I didn't think about it, but you, almost like a Master Chief Collection kind of thing. Even where they just put up a new coat of paint over the game. Mm-hmm. It's plural. Both. Well, of there's, them. there's only two of them, right? Perfect right, Dark yeah. and Perfect Dark Zero. Yeah. Right. I also and don't forget the tie-in novel, Perfect Dark, the Dark Project. Well, what's even funnier is I actually heard the name Joanna Dark the other day. In the Doom oh. Annihilation movie. I heard that, that was the awful. lead character's name. Is it really? Yes. Huh. I'm like, Joanna Dark. And I'm like, that, that movie has so many like tie-ins to other games. Like, you just have to sit there and watch. And I'm like, one of the scientists' name is Dr. John Carmack. <laughs> wow. What wow. is it, Doom Annihilation? Yeah. It it was basically a straight to digital format release, and when did this come out? Not that long ago. Yeah, like last month. What? Yeah, I don't. Even, I don't feel like I heard anybody talk about this. And the funny thing is, I I almost feel that it was better than the Rock Doom movie. So, wow. Okay. Did it have this killer a first person Carl Urban sequence? No, it did not. So, so there you go. What is this? I didn't. Why didn't I know about this? Two, yeah, see what I'm saying. Like, no, how did nobody? 2019. Nobody talked. To, zero people talked about this. So, well, now you know. I don't think. Well, you didn't really sell it. Me, sell me on it. It's it's not great, but it's it's worth a one time watch. Did you know that the? Did you know that the person who directed Doom Annihilation also directed Soccer Dog the movie from 1999? <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, with a resume like that, how could he? How could they have turned him down for the job? I, I was Soccer dog. Su- I was actually surprised. Like the action sequences were really good in it. Well, he had all the experience from directing those dogs. Yeah, is, apparently is, so. Is there like a first person mode, like there was in the Rock movie? No, not at all. Oh, really? But there, but there is a really sweet looking BFG. Okay, that's cool. So, so you say BFG now, I think Big Friendly Giant automatically. That's like where my mind, my mind goes first. Oh, wow. I, I definitely don't, so I think you're safe. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to go to my second prediction, and uh, that is that Google Stadia will be discontinued by the end of the year. <laughs> that's low-hanging fruit. <laughs> All right. That does, that does uh, feel like Yeah, it. I mean, Google has a history of giving up on projects anyway. And with how negatively people are talking about this, which is kind of sad because some of the people that, that I've, I've heard on podcasts talk about it are speaking highly about how well it works. But in terms of the price to get in and the subscription service and the lack of, uh, well, there's, there's like one original game you can get right now that Darksiders Genesis, I think is, is if I'm not mistaken, is the only. No, that's on, well, that's on PC too. There's one. From the developers of mm-hmm. Rhyme, that is Sadie exclusive. I cannot remember the name of it though. I think Guilt maybe with like okay. a Y in the middle of it. But not a lot of, 
you know, console sellers, or if, if you call that a console. Well. Yeah, and you also have to pay full price to unlock the ability to stream right. a video game. Not only that, but if they ever do shut it down, you don't get to keep the game in any way, shape, or form. And that hardware you bought is essentially useless. Yeah. I was actually just reading about the the fact that the version of Borderlands 3 they put on there was a two-month, like, old version of the game. Seriously? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I heard that as well. Yeah. So. That sounds like something Gearbox would do. Hmm. So, yeah, that might be low-hanging, but I think it's going to happen. Uh, and it's too bad. It's funny to me that we got... I was actually genuinely excited about Stadia when it first announced, but then Project X Cloud started coming about, and I'm like, I like that idea way better because I already have an Xbox, and I don't even want... I'm not even worried about playing Xbox on the go. I am just would like to play Xbox anywhere in my house. You know? Yeah. You know, get credit for... for uh, together time on the couch while I'm playing you know a game while my wife watches her, her TV show or something yeah or play in bed like I'm, if I could just play a game before I go to bed and not have to worry I mean I know it sounds like first world problems but yeah, you know, turn off the console turn off the TV I can just turn my phone off and set it aside and go to bed I just I like that idea but I, I love xCloud man it's where it's at well hopefully it comes to iOS too that's another thing that's driving me crazy I can't do that but all right, my third and final prediction is that Nintendo will launch either an N64 Classic or a Game Boy Classic in 2020. Thoughts? I wonder if they would wonder wonder if they would Spend make a points. Game Boy Classic but it would be an actual handheld, you know, like a handheld console instead of it being instead of hooking up to the TV, it would actually be like a Game Boy recreation with like I think it'd be awesome if it did 75 both. games, you know. Oh I, yeah, dock it like a Switch. Mm-hmm. I could actually see the Game Boy Classic more than the N64. Why is that? Just because the well the Game Boy was still one of the highest selling handhelds of all time. Mm-hmm. So it it makes sense the fact that like now you see kids and they're like what is this gigantic gray brick? And that was the coolest so, thing when we were kids. I think it would have to have a backlit screen though. You can not oh, I yeah. I could see an LCD screen mm-hmm. on it. So all right. The the sixty four N sixty four is really hard to emulate, so I'm I'm kind of curious to know what they would do, because it just sucks trying to emulate sixty four. So I wonder if they what they're what they're going to do. They need need a little more hardware, a little more horsepower than what they've put into the other miniature systems. And maybe so I know what they would do. I'm curious. S- screw up like Sony. Oh, yeah. perfect. Jeez, well, they can't screw up that badly. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I was just giving those things away. I, I actually just picked up a second one the other day for five dollars. Whoa, really? I would buy one for five dollars. Uh, yeah. Man, so, I need to find one. It was at a pawn shop for five bucks, still in the box. Wow. Wow. All right, Grant. Right, you're so. up, sir. What are your predictions? Uh more powerful switch will be out by holiday twenty twenty. Okay. So whatever the next iteration is I think will be out by the end of the year. You mean like a Switch Two or a like a like a? There was talk a while ago of a smaller Switch, like a lighter Switch, and then a more a nicer Switch. And I think that the nicer Switch, maybe I shouldn't say more powerful, but the 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 let's call it the the Switch VIP. That's my branding <laughs> for the night. The Switch VIP white the white glove delivery Switch will be out by the end of the year. Well, because we got the Switch um, Switch XL. The, oh, Switch X. Yeah. Oh man. Big freaking! It looks like a. It's like this big. It's like giant. <laughs> it's like an uh, iPad. Yeah, I would just love. I'd love a switch with. It's not going to happen, but I would love a switch with an OLED screen, you know, like a really nice quality uh, upgrade to what they have. So I, I think there'll be a new version of the switch out by the end, of the end of this year. That is like a, a step up. They've done the step down with the light, even though it's really nice. Uh, it's not really a step down, but I think they're they're going to put the next the nicer version of the switch out a, a hardware iteration this year. Uh, Mario Odyssey 2 announced this year. Okay. Go okay. crazy. Wow, Go that's, crazy. That's a, that's, Let's get nuts. Yeah, that feels like a bold one to me. Splatoon 3 will be out before Animal Crossing. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> uh, what's with all the Mario, the, all the Nintendo stuff? This is, I didn't even realize I did three Nintendo things. Um, the 3DS will cease production this year. Yeah, that, that, ooh, that's gotta happen, right? 
I don't know. I, I feel uh, like that's actually probably the least likely. Yeah. But, uh, but I'm still going to say it because whatever. Let's do it. Because didn't the Vita just cease production last year or earlier this year? Vita uh, ceased official production, like official production. But uh, companies like Limited Run Games, Super Rare, and Strict Limited are still making Vita games. So Right. Well, that's, yeah. I'm just, I think, I mean, I think the 2DS is still doing fine, but I just think the 3D, I think the 3DS is going away. I think 2DS will, will continue on, but 3DS is gone this year. Hmm. Like, man. Nintendo, yeah, the first Box Boy wasn't in 3D, and I was like, man, I don't know, what, what's the reason to even go 3D any, anymore? I don't know. So we'll see. Those are my three. All right. It's a bold call. 19 points next year. 19.2 <laughs> points next year. That's right. Yeah. Well, those were our predictions for 2020. We're going to go ahead and jump now into the 2019 Gaming Outsider Award categories. We've all come up with... Uh, these are the same categories we did last year. Let's start with... We're just going to run through these quickly. Best new franchise of 2019. Uh, Zach. Zach. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if this counts, but I would say Jedi Fallen Order. Yeah, I Does actually it had it on on mine initially, and I changed it. So okay, so fall Jedi Jedi Jedi, I guess right. is the franchise name. I, I I say that because of the story, and not to, to get into spoiler territory. I love that it went a certain direction until the very end, <clears throat> um, which Shiba and I talked about. You wait. You, you no, no, like no. You were CB we're, and like yeah, the, yeah. Yeah, very, very end. <laughs> we're not going to get into specifics because I Grant is still playing the game, but uh, um, uh, I CB and I differ greatly. But well, I I feel like we should do a okay. spoiler cast on that game just to talk about because yes, I feel like with the way that story went, it felt like what we wanted in a Star Wars game in terms of story. You know, something that um that just felt fresh and it felt like it, it made me care about these characters that I've never met before. I truly liked it. So that's why I considered putting it on mine, but on for a franchise for new, you think that makes it a new franchise? Because it would be, it would be a franchise in and of itself. It's set in the star Wars universe, but I would say that fallen order, you know, the star Wars oh, Jedi. It's, its own thing. Yeah. It's, it's not a part of the Skywalker saga. It's like a separate, separate thing entirely. Right. Is that so? Okay. That's right. Cool. Yeah. Because because I guess you because you would say Knights of the Old Republic is a franchise or X Wing versus mm -hmm. Tie Fighter. Yeah. Right. Are different. They're not all just the Star Wars franchise. It falls under the Star Wars umbrella, but it's yeah. its own. If it falls under our Disney monopoly overlords. <laughs> there you go. CB, okay. what about you? Uh, I'm also going Fallen Order. All right. I actually went with Control as my uh, b best new franchise because I feel like, especially the way that game ended, it just opened up all kinds of possibilities for the future of that game. Although we may not get another, we may not get a control two, but I think that game is ripe for all kinds of DLC, like just unlimited potential. And uh, that's why it was my pick. Grant. I put a uh, funnily, I didn't play control, but I put control. Uh, and the reason is because I've, and it's just because I haven't gotten to it yet, but there is, I, and it seems kind of, I probably should have put something else, but I just feel like nothing, I've never seen anything like Control, ever, in a, in a video game. I mean, I, maybe it ends up playing a lot like uh, other games, but in terms of the way that the, they, I, I've, I've, I've seen, I've watched a buddy play maybe two or three hours of it, uh, and it's just like, it is like nothing I've ever seen before in a lot of ways in video games. And I feel like for that reason, it, it feels really new. It, when you say new franchise, I'm always trying to think of something that I just haven't ever seen. And I just don't think like mm -hmm. Control is, it's not attached to any other property. It's sort of its own thing. And so I put that as well. You know, that's, that's interesting because it was dancing around as me, mine as well, just because of, I w you know, I didn't know if Star Wars counted or not. And to me, I was like, yeah, I guess like it's a really cool new franchise, but it just feels so much like a remedy game. That, like it felt like it almost felt like well, I have played like three of these, hmm. which is I, which is fine. I actually, uh, on my notepad, originally wrote Control, but I'm superstitious, so I felt if I called it the best new franchise, it was just gonna die out right then and there. 
I don't, I think it's going <laughs> to die out anyway, man. I'm sorry. I hate to break it to you. You know, like that's all the screenshots are of office cubicles. Well, did you see the original box art for Control before they actually put her on the cover? It was just like a, like a red bloody smear or something like that. Like it, it, or, or I don't know. You know, like what happened in between the load screens, like the, the movie, the moving liquid or whatever. It just like a, it looked like a, a liquid red substance and that was it. So, so the Metallica load album. I, it's funny you say that because I thought that exact same thing, except if you know what that album actually is, it's kind of messed up. Yeah. But uh, that's that's what I thought of when I saw it. I was like, hey, it looks like the Load album. So, boy, they got away with that one, by the way. Yeah, they did. <laughs> is, it a bloody, is it a bloody load? Is that what's up? Yes. Okay. That's literally what it is. I mean, that's still PG. I, I kept it safe, all right? No, I know. I, I appreciate you yeah. doing that, but uh, yeah. I just... I definitely don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, you'll have to look it up after after we're done here. But all right, let's move on. We're going. We're we're never going to get to this episode. Yeah. Uh, no. Biggest surprise of 2019. Uh, I'll start this one. My biggest surprise of the year. Uh, I have to look at my notes here. Was a Plague Tale Innocence. I did not expect to like that game, uh, and everybody kept talking about it. And granted, I didn't finish it, but it was mostly because uh, I somebody else beat it before me, and I. I knew I couldn't. I couldn't finish it. I need to go back and finish it. Uh, incredibly well done story and surprisingly unfrustrating stealth controls. Like I, I never felt, I, I never felt frustrated if I ever messed up. It it wasn't like like a Metal Gear Solid stealth. It was like you just knew what you had to do and you just did it. The game just flowed so well. It was a definite big surprise for me. Zach. Uh, for me, Apex Legends, I think. That's a good call. Yeah, it is. You know, uh, not even just to me, like to the industry, really. Like, it came out of nowhere, became the third the third tier of uh, Battle Royale, which mm-hmm. is a genre I didn't really care about. And I had played PUBG in Fortnite, and they didn't really catch me, but Apex Legends got me. Me too. I wasn't a big multiplayer guy, but uh, when Respawn makes a multiplayer game, it is uh, it's time to pay attention. Good call. CB, you're the last one? Control. Like, that was your biggest surprise? Yeah. Because, again, I went into that game not knowing much, and I loved it. Like, I, I, was, I really thought that was going to be a game I was not going to like, and hmm. it was really good, man. So I agree. Good call. Next category is underrated games of 2019. These are games that probably won't make our top 10 list, but uh, deserve to be recognized. We can't have any more than five each. We had to limit it. So just kind of list through them. Uh, Zach, underrated games? Yeah, sure. Uh, what What the Golf is a really great game. Good call. It's kind of the the uh, the crown jewel of the Apple Arcade, if you ask me. That provided it just it just went on too long. Was the problem with that game? So it, it didn't crack my top ten. Although it was dangerously close. And then Concrete Genie is the other one for me. Mm-hmm. I remember talking about that one as well. It was that's my number eleven game of the year, Concrete Genie. It was a it was a very charming little you know, platformer that that shifts genres in its last third, which is pretty ballsy and cool. Yeah, I remember you telling me about that. It turned into like got difficult in the final. They introduce yeah they don't they don't introduce combat to the game until the last third. Which is crazy. Which is yeah, which is pretty pretty wild. All right, Chris, how about you? Um, Vader Immortal. Oh, you mean that game you haven't finished the second episode of? Yep. <laughs> well, it's a good thing. Good thing you have on his Oculus Quest. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, if it was so far, other than not playing the second episode and everything, I just wanted the campaign to be a little bit longer. Um, after party. Oh yeah, we actually beat that one kind of together. We were yeah. at we were at an extra life event and sitting playing side by side, each playing our own game. Yeah, really love that one. I. I love the voice acting in it, and it's actually a really fun story. Uh, and then Man of Medan. That's another one I didn't finish. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. It's a good call. Uh, After Party was on my list as well. I also had Killer Queen Black, which uh, is a ridiculously fun party game if you can convince seven other people to sit down and set up a game on a Switch with you. Uh, that proved to be difficult when we tried to do that at an Extra Life event, because trying to expl- that's a game you have to explain people how to play it, because it's it's a difficult game to wrap your head around and uh and then you gotta hook up you know eight controllers and get all that going it's a mess 
Uh, and then Sayonara Wild Hearts is a game that more people need to play. I, I played it on Apple Arcade and delightful, delightful game to play, especially if you like music. I think Zach, hey, you, I, you like it. I don't like, yeah, I was yeah. Gonna say, I don't like music and I like that game quite a bit. So yeah, it's narrated by Queen Latifah. Fun fact. I did not know that. Yeah. I, I think it's simpler than res and gameplay. It's, it's more like, uh, it, it feels like a, what's that temp, temple run? It feels like if Temple Run were in the Res universe and had awesome music, but then it turns into like like a touch game that is a fighter game. That, I mean, it's just it's yeah. it's crazy. It might be it might be the most stylish game of the year. Mm-hmm. Play it with headphones as well. It's awesome. Uh, and that's it. All right, next category. You know, I I'll say it. I had Gears Five on my list. I I, I don't know if that's on anybody else's list. We'll get there. But uh, it was one that did not make my top 10, but not because it wasn't good. There were just too many other good games. Uh, and I had a good time going through that campaign. So here's five. Most disappointing game of 2019. Zach, let's start with you. Well, funny you should mention Gears 5. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, even I was going to say, even though it's actually on my top 10 list, and this, uh, this was probably the category I had, like, thought about the most, but even though it did crack my top 10 and I did like it, it was still probably the game I'm most disappointed with of the year because I love Gears of War to death. And I think this is easily the worst Gears of War, uh, which still makes it a really good game. Mm-hmm. It was just, I mean, if it, like the story to me almost felt incomplete. Like I, I, every other Gears of War is five acts. This one was four acts, you know, for instance. And it just, uh, I don't know. I felt it felt like it just ended very Halo Two style. And yeah, I, I can that agree with that. Disappointed to me. And the the open world segments, I don't think added anything to the gameplay at all, other than to buff out the time. I will agree with you on that. And yeah, I don't know. I like I didn't even I didn't even bother. Like I never even got around to trying out the other game modes. Really, like I played a few rounds of Versus, but I never, I never even tried that uh that three player co op running mode. Escape. Yeah, escape. Yeah, it just didn't. I don't know. Just didn't hook it. And like we we talked such a big game scout about how we were gonna like d- dive back into gears big time, and it didn't. It didn't hook its teeth into either of us that way. Yeah, kind of like we never played uh, Borderlands Three. Yep. Oh yeah, sure. Which spoiler alert? There's... I have a copy of it sitting here that I was gonna give you at Christmas, but uh, <laughs> because we you never bought it to play with us, so I'm like, well, I'm gonna buy you a copy then. Granted, it's a red box yeah, my, copy, have... but hey. Oh. Well, yeah, my you have my address. I know, I know. But well, uh, thank you, Scott. That was very nice. That was a very nice gift. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, let's see who's up next. Chris, most disappointing game. Rage two. Yeah, that was on my list too. All right. Uh, that was that was one of the games that I was looking forward to the most this year. And after two hours, I was like, I'm done. Yeah, I I yeah. seriously put about two hours into it. And I'm like, I just have no desire to to move on with this game at all. So yeah, I'm with you. Uh, for me, it is uh, a Knight's Quest, which I thought was going to be an awesome Zelda clone. And it started out as an awesome Zelda clone and turned into one of the most frustrating experiences I had of the entire year. So much so that I could not finish it. No. I did finish it. I did finish it. I finished it? I think I you did. It. That was, it was so memorable. Yeah. Uh, it it started out with such promise. It like that first dungeon was such a Zelda thing, but it but it was just different enough to be cool. And then it just turned into this ridiculous traver like to get from one place to another was so frustrating. And you had to be so precise with the controls by the end of the game. I just I I I was so I I've never been so angry that I had to finish a game before in my in the entire year. So. A Knight's Quest was definitely my most disappointing. That game just had such promise. It's, it, I was like, oh man, the grand return of wall running to video games. Yes. And it just, uh, that game, that game could have been great if they cut about, what, eight, ten hours off of it? Seriously. If you got to cut eight to ten hours off of a game to make it good, that's a problem. But the, the core of it is so appealing. Yeah. The color style is great. The characters were good. The humor was, was modern. You know, you don't get that kind of modern humor in like a Zelda game. And it just it just felt like such a waste. It had so much potential. 
Real quick, any games you guys regret not checking out in 2019? Chris? Days Gone? Yeah, I should have put that on my list, too. And My hey, Friend Pedro. It's, it's real good, guys. Days Gone. So, I actually... I actually just started playing My Friend Pedro yesterday. So, and I love that game. Yeah? Yeah, I do. I really do. When so, it's it's ridiculous. My my list is much longer than yours, <laughs> I think. Uh, let's see, The Outer Worlds. I did play it, did not finish it. I uh, really enjoyed what I was playing. I just I got distracted. Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice, is a game that, you know, was the game of the year at uh, the Game Awards. So many people love it, but I'm just scared to death of that gameplay style. But just with how highly everybody talks about it, I feel like I should give it another shot. Borderlands 3 played, what, an hour of that CB, I think we did? Yep. And it's more Borderlands 2, so I should love it. But uh, just waiting to play that with Zach so we can all play something together. Uh, Untitled Goose Game. It's on Game Pass. I can play it. I have not yet. Everyone just, no one will stop talking about that game. That game is great. Yeah. Uh, Super Mario Maker 2, uh, I did play like the, I played through the quote unquote campaign or whatever you know, that you did, but I didn't play any of the design levels that people made at all. So I don't feel like I give that a fair shake. Metro Exodus, I forgot that game came out this year and I <laughs> uh, didn't play through much of it, but uh, I think Joel reviewed that for us and CB, you played through it. The story sounds amazing. I, I reviewed it. For, I, I reviewed it for us. Oh, did you review it? I'm sorry. And uh, he he played it on PC. I remember now because he was talking highly about how much it, how good it looked on PC. And Bloodstained: Ritual of the Night, game that I really loved, and for some reason I just stopped playing. It was very much a Castlevania game. Don't know why I gave up. And the last one, Ring Fit Adventure. I was this close to buying Ring Fit Adventure for my Switch, and then I remembered that my Joy Cons on my original Switch are shot. And if I were to enjoy that game, I'd have to buy new Joy-Cons, so it would actually double the price of the game for me. So I just kind of put that to the wayside, but I'm still toying with the idea because I'm trying to, you know, do the New Year's thing and eat better and exercise, and I'd rather exercise in a fun way instead of running in a circle for 15 minutes. So those were my uh, biggest regrets from the year. Zach? Yeah. Uh, I th- I think I have a list more similar to Scott's in terms of length. Um, there were, yeah, there were a few, uh, Vader Immortal kind of immediately came to mind cause yeah. I can't play it. So that sucks. And then Scott rubbed it in the past week as well. Uh, Shen- Shenmue 3, just cause I mean, I kickstarted it and I haven't gotten around to it yet cause it just, it came out at such a bad time, but I gotta get, I gotta get in it. Uh, Sekiro, I have not finished and I regret that because I'm pretty sure it'd probably be in the top five, but I just haven't uh, finished it yet. So it's a... The wife and I have been slowly playing through it all year. Well, now, I guess, into the next year, too. Uh, Link's Awakening, I never got around to, just due to release time. And uh, I haven't really gotten, like, I hate that art style. I know, that uh, makes me a bad human being. But that definitely pushes me away from it. And then uh, Left Alive, because I heard it was, it reviewed so badly, Square Enix wouldn't even give us code for it. Uh, so wow. that, I want to, I want to check that. I own it. I bought it off a uh, Gamefly sale for like nine bucks about a month after it came out. Holy I really want to check that game out. Cause all the art is the, uh, art lead was Yoji Shinkawa from Metal Gear Solid. So it looks sharp, but it, uh, also looks like it plays miserably. And, and then the big one was AI, the Somnium Files, which is a game that Scott sent me a trailer for when it was announced. It said, this looks like a Zach ass game. And I watched the trailer, I was like, wow, this looks like a Zach-ass game. <laughs> and then I uh, I just never, it was one of those, one, it was a busy year, especially for us at the Gaming Outsider, trying to review all those games and everything. Mm-hmm. Over 100 published reviews this year. 106 was our final count. So it was a, uh, it was a busy year for us, and it just, you know, some games slipped through the crack. But I really want to get to AI, especially because it looks Japanese, dark, bonkers, weird. It looks like it could have been the same school that Hideo Kojima and Yoko Taro went to to learn how to make games. Mm. So I'm pretty excited. Nice, nice. And last category we have before we get to our personal favorites of the year is best narrative of 2019. And I will start, and I'm going to say best narrative. I said Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Uh, I toyed around with Control a little bit, but for me, the ending of Control fell a little flat 
Whereas I felt very satisfied with the ending of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Um, I, I have mixed feelings, which I'm not going to get into here for the sake of I Grant. I really need to talk to you off air about these mixed feelings. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it just felt like what I wanted from the next step of a Star Wars game. And it felt like I had more potential for another game. Like, a, like it's the start of a new franchise. And it gives me hope for the future of Star Wars games in general. Uh, just a great story. Absolutely loved it. So uh, Fallen Order gets my pick. Zach? Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. <laughs> <laughs> it's about, what are we? Damn, if only CB didn't hate, uh, hate that story, we would almost have a clean sweep. Yeah, I think <laughs> I don't. I don't know what I don't know what else to add here. I mean, it is. Uh, I think it's a it's a surprisingly emotionally complex story. Uh, yes, it is. It is so rooted in trauma, and in in a way that like you know always lingered in the background for like like say a character like Obi Wan Kenobi in the original trilogy. They they really lean into they really lean into the damage Order sixty six would cause to people. Mm-hmm. And that's that's really great, and I, I'm very intrigued in your feelings towards the ending because it's actually it's like it's one of my favorite endings in some time. Maybe very we should do a spoiler it, cast on that game. Yeah, I'm intrigued. Like it really, I don't know. I thought I thought it really uh, landed, really nailed it. Um, yeah, definitely Jedi Fallen Order. Minor minor gripe that is not worth uh, dismissing the story. So that's that's all I'll say. But uh, also, one one quick thing I want to say about that game. Were you as surprised as I was about how, I think we talked about this, but how much you like Cal? Yes, because in all of the marketing and the box art, he looked like boring, generic, white dude protagonist number 53. And he is much more than that. Yeah. He actually, he has a full darn arc, does he? I was uh, blown away. And he's not, he's not what you expect at all. Mm-hmm. At all. Yeah, and it's it's great. He's almost, yeah, it's kind of cool. He's almost addicted to the adrenaline in some ways. All right, CB. So, what game did you pick that is not Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order? Well, first off, let me get this out of the way. I don't hate the story. <laughs> There's just one thing about it that I don't like. Um, but yes, I'm I'm going against the grain here. I did not choose Jedi Fallen Order. Uh, a Plague Tale. I kind of figured that was coming. So yeah, that's yeah, it's a it's pretty that's a good but weird story. It is, but I I had a lot of emotion attached to that game. I just thought it was beautiful and very well crafted. Just bizarre. And I like bizarre. <laughs> it is it is very bizarre. No, that's a respectable choice, CB, I gotta say. I gotta so. go back and finish that game. I I would have to start over though. I have no idea how to play that game now. <laughs> at all but it's, it's just it's the last of us with rats scott it's pretty easy to figure out yeah pretty much <laughs> willard <laughs> oh no i i understood that reference <laughs> all right guys it is officially time for the 2019 gaming outsider personal favorite so here's what we did uh the three of us uh not not grant grant's gonna have his own his own list uh, outside of us but the three of us put together our top 10 lists of the game of the year and uh, we sent them to grant Grant compiled them into a spreadsheet where he uh, allotted points for each one. So each of our number ones got 10 points, our number twos got nine points, and so on. And he put them on a list, and then he's going to give us our top five games of the year based on our votes. And we will debate about uh, if our rankings actually make sense or if we need to crown somebody different for game of the year, stick with the math or not. Fair enough. Next in line, Apex Legends. Respectful Hell choice. Yeah. It came That's, close. Uh, yeah. It, it almost, almost cracked the top five for me. Oh, really? Mm. It almost Ooh, cracked the yeah. top ten for me. It was in my honorable mentions. Yeah. Am I, am I the only one with this on my list? Uh, probably. Yeah, I don't think oh. CB would have okay. it on his list for sure. Wow, nope. Interesting. Yeah, no, that's that's what I was referencing in a game that you can't beat. Yeah, that was my that was my number six game of the year. Mm, I, right. I just don't do Battle Royale games. Neither did I. Well, CB has a kid that plays Fortnite, so he's got, you know. Not anymore. Oh, really? You got rid of the kid? Yep. No. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no. Actually, since they, Fortnite did their whole, like, world-ending thing, he has had no desire to go back to that game. So Interesting. Oh, that is mm. interesting. It, is, huh. it has been mm. back to Minecraft. 
and the Escapists. He does love that oh, game. Oh, wow. Wow. We got to move quick, game. guys. We have a pretty big list of games here to get through. I think this is what Call. people... People will fast forward through the rest of the show to get to this segment, Scott. So just... Okay. All right. Let it, let it breathe. All right. Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Love the C-Boy campaign. No. It's yeah, really good. good campaign. Did not make my top 10. Mm. Wow. Is this, is this on your list, CB? Maybe. Well, I, okay. Well, I, aren't, we, aren't we putting our cards on the <laughs> yeah, table here? Is this what this is about? Tell us, it's, it's, on my, it is. it's on my list. Yeah, okay. Wow. Um, hey, it's on mine, too. It did crack Ooh. the top five. Oh, wow. Mm. For, the, for the campaign alone, because I, I did not do the multiplayer at all. I didn't I'm, either. I'm willing to bet I know who picked the next game. <laughs> oh, I don't know what that is. I don't, I'm not keeping Which the is? list up. It's more fun. Which is Children of Morgan. Yeah, I have to imagine oh, okay, I'm the yeah. only one that put that on my list. Yes, I... <laughs> yeah, I have to assume pretty high as well. Yeah, spoiler alert, this is the game that I didn't finish. But, okay, you know, roguelike. That's in the Apex Legends camp of you can't. No, you actually can. Oh, okay. There, yeah. there's, there's an actual finale to this, and I'm still, I've actually been playing it uh, all weekend. And uh, after all, all the hours I put in that game, I'm still only about halfway through it. It's a very lengthy game. It's a mm. grind. But it is... It's a fun grind. I don't say that a grind in in a, in a negative sense. It's a game that's even when you're grinding, it's it's a joy to play. Seeing your stats go up is just a blast. I love the storytelling. I love the voice actor, the voiceovers. It's fantastic. Love that game. Cool. Next on the list, Control. I, I think that's on all three of our lists. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I assume quite high on everybody's list as well. Yep. Quite possibly. Mm-hmm. Uh, creature in the well. Only huh. on mine, I'm assuming. Hmm. Scott. Even... Scott Pinball <laughs> Games. What is? Oh, it's a. Oh yeah, that game. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Have you played more of? I swear, it's more of a breakout game than a pinball. People kept talking about pinball. It feels more like a. More like breakout to me if I were to compare it to. Okay. A, a, yeah. An OG ball based thing. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I played a good bit of it. I didn't finish it, but I played a good bit of it. So. I love that game. It's so good. I, Beautiful game. I got bored. Gorgeous game. Never touched. I had, it. I had problems with uh, with aiming. Uh, very peculiar aiming that the switch sticks just didn't want to allow me to do. So I ended up playing it on the TV with a better controller, mm. uh, just so I could aim better. Actually, now now that you say that, yeah, I could definitely see. Like, I wasn't a fan of the aiming. So it takes a minute to figure out how that game wants you to aim because it doesn't control the way that you would think it would by lo- by looking nope. at it. So yeah. Next on the list, Days Gone. Only on Zach's. Yes? Yep. Yeah, well. Yeah. Hey, it's really good, guys. I'm telling you, it's really good. I love you tooting the Days Gone horn. I feel like the people that toot it, toot it loud. Well, uh, it's, I, it's, I own it. I just haven't got around to it. It's, yeah. it's funny because it's, it's so much everything I constantly complain about on the show. Mm-hmm. And yet, for some reason, it's like, like, I don't like open world games. I don't like unnecessarily long games. I don't like useless skill trees. This game has all of those things, and I still love it. It's awesome. That's I don't know cool. if it's the power of Sam Witwer's beautiful face or not, but uh, that certainly probably plays a part. You like motorcycles? That too. <laughs> uh, Death Stranding Def- is on here. Definitely on CB's list. Def- no. <laughs> not at all. Really? No. Nope. Wait, oh. Sarcasm. Is it sarcasm? I was being sarcastic, Ugh. yeah. Ugh. No. 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 <laughs> Wait, is it? Well, it's on someone's list. Is it only? Wow. Okay, that's very interesting to me. It's Especially not on mine. The it's interesting to me because of the placement of the game has on my list. Mm. I'm I and the thing is, I can openly say I put a lot of time in that game, and just no cutie booty delivery duty. Yeah, boy. <laughs> Am I the only one who beat this game? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I played about three hours of it. I'm like, oh, I'm done. Oh man, those those, those last. Two, three hours are excruciatingly bad. Oh, bummer. But it's still on your well, list. It's on the list. It is. It's on the list. It is, even still. Hmm. N- next in line, DMC5. Uh, Zach, you got to say the line. Oh, man. Whew, what a good line. Did you bring marshmallows? Because I'm bringing the fire. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I haven't audibly laughed out loud that hard this year. Except for that moment in Devil May Cry 5. <laughs> it was quote, great. Quote of the, we need, the best, if we need a new category, quote of the year, and it's that. 
We should. We yes. Should. Oh man, it's so good. Also, only I, I have to guess that's only on Zach's list. I, don't even think I did not play it. play it. Yeah. What Scott? It's not on your list. No. We just like, we would just occasionally text each other that quote randomly throughout the year. <laughs> yeah, the line is great. I did not enjoy the game nearly as much as that oh, line. Oh man, interest, interesting. Yeah. Wow. Okay. No, I love that game to death. It's so good. Next up, uh, I actually I thought about picking this up, and I was reminded because of this. Uh, but Freedom Fingers on here. <laughs> Yeah, I can. T- I I believe that is Chris B's pick. Yeah, he's oh, judging yeah. by. Oh what I'm yeah. Saying here. yeah, yeah. Well, you're a fan of the finger, eh? Yes, very much they so. Were, there was some toss up in the marketing department if the name of the game should be Freedom Finger or CB, the video game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that game just screams everything that I love. It's awesome, and we we're not certain, but CB might be getting a box quote on the physical version of that game we we don't know if they're joking with us or not but there was a twitter exchange between us and the developers where they quoted a a line from his written review of the game and i said you know go ahead and use it in the uh in the you know upcoming physical edition of the game and they responded back and said consider it done but we don't wow we don't you know that's awesome we don't know if that'll happen i'm gonna be really mad if cb gets a box (laughs) quote before i do (laughs) <laughs> oh, be envious, not jealous, Scott. Come on, envious, envious. <laughs> All right, next up, Gears Five. <laughs> Zach, that's on your list, right? It is, yeah. Oh, is Despite it really? The... I was no, it really is. Yeah, I I said that that uh, even when I said it's yeah. the most disappointing game of the year, it's I said it was a weird category for me because it's also in my top ten games of the year. That's really that's really interesting to me. Yeah, did oh, not it reminds make mine. me of when uh, it made mine. Ooh, I'm surprised it didn't make Scott. Man, Scott, mm. you must have. Uh, I gotta see. I gotta look at your list again, man. It's. It was in sounds... my honorable mentions. Okay, that sounds crazy. Would have been in my top fifteen, probably, <laughs> probably sure. eleven or twelve. So. All yeah. right. Okay. All right. Cool. Next up, the uh, is one I thought about checking out too, but Katana Zero. Please play Katana Zero, Zach. Yeah. Play I Katana play Zero. It. I want to play it. I will. I will uh, you know, I'll make a note right now. Play Katana Zero. Oh man! Especially you. You know what this game reminded me of, and th- this will get you to play the game. Oh. It's not. It's not as in depth, and the characters aren't as fleshed out. But playing this reminded me of the feelings I got playing that. Uh, what's that game that you recommended me to play last year? That was in like your top two. Iconoclasts. Iconoclasts. It, it's. It's a. a it's not a, that type of game. It's very much an arcadey game, but the storytelling is bizarrely good, uh, and hmm. and the music is great. The aesthetic has this eighties, um, and they actually have like it's it's a game like that plays like Super Meat Boy, where if you get hit once, you're dead, um, and but instead of you know just starting the level over, they actually rewind it. It looks like an eight like a like a VHS tape rewinding. And then you play through it again, and then once you finish it, they actually go through and play the whole thing again, showing how you did it correctly, but they do it a little bit more cinematic, and it looks awesome. Oh, it's it's so good. You need to play that game, Zach. I think you would love it. Is it only a, is it a Switch, a Switch game, right? Yep. Switch exclusive. Right. Okay. We'll check hmm. I'll, I, will, I will check it out. Mm-hmm. And I assume that's not on your CB, right? No, actually, I completely forgot about that game. All right. Do I need to adjust my all of my math and <laughs> and antics to get fit squeeze this on here? No, no, no. Uh, next one, Pistol Whip. It's on my list. It's and I only played it the one day, but that is this year's Beat Saber for me. I have not played a game in a long time where I was sore for two days after playing it. Two or That's three awesome. days. Awesome. I know that yeah. sounds like a, not a selling point, but this game is a workout, and it is so much fun. It is, if Beat Saber, not even Beat Saber, it's a, it's a John Wick simulator set to music where you are firing your gun at all these bad guys while you're, you're on rails, and it's set to music, and you get more points if your shots go in beat with the music. And it is an absolute blast to play. And if you miss 
they actually um, they shoot at you, but you can physically dodge out of the way of the bullets. So I'm dipping and dodging and ducking and all that good stuff from dodgeball. And I, seriously, I pulled a muscle in my neck. I strained a muscle in my groin and that I was that maybe I'm just that out of shape, but like I wanted this to be an exercise regiment. I enjoyed this game that much. It's it's great. super it's super hot on crack. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Imagine if super hot were um on rails and the the movement aspect weren't there and and it's set to music. Sounds like super hot and Beat Saber had a baby. Kinda. Yes. Kinda. Is this on a uh, PSVR as well? No, this one's on Oculus only, unfortunately. Well, it's uh, it's on. Is it on Vive? I believe it's on Vive as well. Yeah, it's but, really good. Like, yeah, and and you don't think you're working out as hard as you are until you're done. You, I took the helmet off, and my legs about gave out. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think I'm gonna cool. I think I'm gonna buy that one on your Oculus because I, I need to play that game more. It's a game I want to get better at too. Plus, they do like the 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 de- difficulty levels aren't just like throwing more bullets at you or more, more enemies. They actually <clears throat> there there's an aim assist mode on the easier levels of difficulty, so you don't have to be super precise with your shots early on. But then they turn start turning the aim assist off, and you actually have to be much more direct and and get those headshots. It's, oh, it's such a good game. Play yeah, pistol whip. Cool. Wait, wait, you play it on hard, Scott. Wait, you yeah. play it on hard. I'm going to have to borrow that Oculus a little bit longer then. Ooh, it's tall order, son. <laughs> All right, what's up next, Grant? Next up, a game that has not been mentioned yet, Pokemon Shield. Definitely C- just CBs. That's yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I it's, yours? S- it's your baby? I assume lower on the list, too. I don't know. I could be wrong. I guess we we'll might see. be surprised. We'll, yeah. So... Right. Uh, Next on the list, Resident Evil 2. That's got to yeah, be in all three of ours. <laughs> Go figure. Yep. So good. For sure. So good. Uh, Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice is on here. <laughs> Only Zach. Nope. I, no, I didn't beat it. Oh, that's Do right. you not you listen said... to me when I talk, Scott? Is that what's oh, up? I thought, I thought you said you had one that you didn't beat that was on your... Oh, no, that was CB that said that. Yep. No, I said, yeah. Well, Apex Legends was the game I was referring to. Ah, okay. Yeah. No, well, that, you did... that one snuck onto my list. That shocks me that you like Sekiro that much. I love the story. I hate the gameplay mechanics, but it's enough that the story is so good that it makes me want to play it. That's funny because I feel like the story gets hmm. in the way of the gameplay. Hmm. Because I'm so used to those games having no story, and the Sekiro puts the story right in your face, and I'm like, can we stop with the talking? Let's get back to the fighting. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, boy, we're getting near the end here. What's up next? Yes, we are. We're in the S's. Uh, next up, Shovel Knight, King of Cards. I know little about this. I remember it came out, but I never even watched a trailer, and I've heard, seen mentions from friends that they love it. Yeah, it, it's uh, great. So it's some people's favorite Shovel Knight so far, so I don't know if you guys feel that strongly, but... I think it's my, my favorite of the ones after the original. I still think the original mm-hmm. is my favorite, but this is this is second. Not only did it put a good bow on the story... It, it's so clever how they make the games, each game play completely differently than, than the last. And, and mm-hmm. so that it feels like you're playing a fresh game every time, which I guess you are. But uh, just it's just like a perfect game for me. Yeah, I thought, I thought it was great, too. It's my favorite Shovel Knight because it's the only one I've played. Oh, you got to go back and play the others. Yeah. Yeah, we talked about this on, the, on our podcast uh, yeah. review episode. Cool. Next on the list. Star Wars Jedi colon Fallen Order. Yeah, on my they, list. Really mess, they really messed up the colon placement in that game. <laughs> it's really confusing, uh, but that's fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. New franchise, the Star Wars Jedi franchise. Yeah, here we go. That's, that's yeah, they want to make they want that's how they, they knew they could make make your franchise best list. Yes, they were colon. going. They wanted to be make sure that the gaming outsider gave them proper representation by putting that colon after that's Jedi. Right. That's right. Uh, nope, that game's that game's real good. I assume it's on everybody's list. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, that game. Cool. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's been the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, next one, another game that has not been mentioned, The, the Division 2. That's on my mm. list. Yeah, it's a Scott Clark right there. Oh, I love that game so much. Uh, 
Hey, did, was Sam Fisher tucked away anywhere? Maybe I could get like another point one point on that. No. <laughs> Darn. No. Believe, believe it or not, Scott, you're not the only one that made that list. Oh, you got Division Two on yours as well. Nice. Yep. Nice. Ah, oh, I did not like the first one, and the second one just drew me in and got me to play the community. That's like I was coming home from work and playing playing Division. It was it was awesome. Mm. That was definitely a fun month. Mm -hmm. Two more. Two more. Sorry about the 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 articles in the front of this. This should have been the L's, but it's not. (laughs) Uh, I'm a professional. Uh, The Legend of Zelda Link's (laughs) Awakening is on someone's list. Only not surprised. Only mine. Okay, there you go. Yeah, well. Uh, Interestingly enough, that made my list, but Cadence of Hyrule did not, which is a new game. mm, Which I'm mm -hmm. actually surprised that Cadence didn't. Uh, I didn't finish it. I got very frustrated with that game. I love the concept. I just am terrible at that game. Me too. I did find the same thing. I I, I fell off it real hard. Uh, but the music is so good. Yeah, they they really, I, I want to get like a soundtrack of Cadence of Hyrule because they really did something yeah. interesting with that with those familiar themes. Yeah, I'm so happy. That. I'm so happy Scott's got a couple of remakes on his list because I feel like you're always so reticent to love remakes because you're like, oh, but it's just a remake. <laughs> Or like coming out of E3, you're like, I, I don't know about Resident Evil 2 being the coolest thing because, you know, it, it is a remake. Yeah. But uh, it's but, not. It's a new game, man. That's also somebody talking in my ear. So, you know. Yeah. Well, <laughs> brand new game. <laughs> <laughs> Last one. Last game in the list for 2019, The Outer Worlds. All right. CB. I like right, that. CB? That's going to be a CB exclusive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that's, that's a me. It probably would have that's made a, my list if I finished it. And I, I didn't not complete it because I wasn't enjoying it. I just ran out of time. I just ran straight up ran out of time. So again, the those games that Grant uh listed were ones that just appeared on our top ten. These are not all the games we played this year, it's just the ones for our top ten. And now it is the moment of truth, Mr. Henry. You're going to give us our top five games based on our rankings. Uh, you know, maybe six if there's any ties or something like that. But uh, I am genuinely curious because my list is the only one that's out there, I think. I have no idea your guys' placements at all. So, Grant, it is in your hands, sir. Where are we at? We're going to do – there is a tie okay. for one of these. Uh, instead of skipping a number, I'm just going to consider two games to be one number. I don't know if that makes sense. You know, sometimes you do sure. like – if there's a tie, you skip the next number. Yeah, uh, we're gonna fit as we're gonna fit as many games into this top five as possible. Is what I'm saying. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. So, for, so, so for number five, we have a tie between two very different games: Children of Morta, okay, and the Divi- and the Division Two. That's both, both had ten. Points. Yeah, both t- tied for number five. That's interesting. Oh. Yeah. Huh. So that means yeah. that CB put it at number ten. Had to have put it at number 10, because I put it at number two. Yep. Oh, yeah. Hey, that math works out. Look at you yeah. being a oh, that's funny. mathematician. That's so funny. Yeah. yeah, I haven't played either one of those games, so glad I could be part of the conversation. Well, you don't play Children of Morta, because I don't want you to taint my love and adoration for that game. If I, well, I hope me saying something negative wouldn't affect you. <laughs> no, but it was my number one. Yeah, I did know that. I knew, I knew that some time ago. Sweet. All right, number four. Number four is A Plague Tale Innocence. Okay. Right. Yeah. See, I'm, yeah. See, I'm surprised about that. I need to play that, apparently. Um, number three, Resident Evil 2. Not surprised. Hot dog. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Number two and number one, I think you, you, you guys could probably guess what they are. I don't know I'm which curious. is which, though. I will tell you that there is one point separating these two. Oh. One. Okay. One point. Um. So yeah, so the, it's really like it's very much a crapshoot. But uh, do you guys want to place any bets or anything? Ah, uh, boy, I'm gonna say controls number one. I'm gonna say controls yeah. number one as well. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. go with that. Just because well, CBs ha- hate mongering for Fallen Order over here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will say number two is in fact Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, and your number one game of 2019, Control. I'm not mad at that. I'll allow it. I I You'll did not it? skew yeah. Fallen Order that hard. 
<laughs> we uh, have to we have to we don't have to shuffle anything around. You guys are okay with that? We don't need to do a no no tilt score. No, it is you guys cool with that list. It is funny that, um, because I had a I had a toss up between my number two and three, so I could have if I had flipped those, it would have tied the game of the year. It would have made game mm. of the year a tie. Then we would have debated. Mm. You're right. Yeah, we would have had to fight it out. I think we would have come to the conclusion <laughs> that it was control anyway, but. Because hmm. my yeah. number three game of the year is Don't May Cry Five, and I don't think that was gonna. And yeah. that clearly didn't uh, crack any anything here. So, look at that. We have we have another tie. I must mention, uh, uh, both with one point, ladies and gentlemen, Pistol Whip and Death Stranding. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. there we go. <laughs> the one <tie> pointers. For... <laughs> I mean, you know, that's uh, so. You know, there's those. There's still. Two of the ten most interesting games yeah. of the year to, mm, yeah. to us, you know. That's a good year, though, man. Uh, I think so. I think I wrote this in my article. You, you kind of expect, with it being the end of the console generation, for it to not not be a ton of great games. But there was a ton of great games this year. Yes, yes, there was. There were, and, and it it was a more uh, interesting year because Spider Man was so clearly ahead of the pack last year for us. Mm-hmm. That it was nice. It was nice going into this year. Going, I, I, I did not know. I assumed it was going to be controller Star Wars, but I did not know what it was going to be. And the fact that it was one point difference is pretty cool. Yeah. So if I remember right, I think Spider Man was many points ahead of our number two game. I believe it was. Yeah. yeah. And and I'll, I'll tell you, Star Wars, the, the Star Wars game. I just didn't have any expectations for it at all. It came. It snuck up really quick, and then it was out. I don't think anyone was crazy hype for it it looked kind of uncharted and uncharted i think when they first showed it the footage and they uh but man it's just a straight it is a rockin metroidy soulsy it's awesome it's yeah. like a it's a killer star wars game. they could not have unveiled that game more poorly than truly here, yeah here's and, yeah, and marketing up to the release too, bland, bland white dude and then like oh i guess it's a linear uncharted kind of game and then you know it's ea is behind it and they just, yeah, they didn't advertise any of the parts that people would have latched onto, like that Metroidvania aspect. You know, they also showed almost nothing of the story in the, That's in the true. marketing. You know, like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. The marketing team on this one, they might need a, they might need a write up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I didn't go into it with extremely high hopes just because. It had been a while since a good Star Wars game had been had come out, so it wouldn't have been in, since like The Force Unleashed. Yeah, an eleven year wait. I, so. I, I'm really curious to, to hear how you felt going back to Force Unleashed after playing Fallen Order, because the combat is so vastly different. Where I would have to imagine playing that game feels like you're wielding a baseball bat instead of a lightsaber. You know, it's funny you use a baseball bat analogy because it's exactly what I was thinking of when I was hitting stormtroopers. Yeah, especially based on the way they react. But uh, it was it was weird at first, but there are so many things you forget about in that game, like the the technology behind it. Where when you're when you're forced throwing around Wookies and stuff, they'll grab onto each other. They'll try to grab it on a wall. They'll try to save themselves. Mm-hmm. Like those, there was uh, those are fun things to remember. And also, the story is still incredible. That still holds up. Entirely. It's a little bit funny going back to it with how reserved the Force powers are in Fallen Order. Mm-hmm. And then it's just a straight up, you know, episode of DBZ in Force Unleashed. <laughs> yeah. Basically. It's, it's kind of fun. But no, that game, that game, that game holds up. It still has one of the worst jumps in gaming, but I already, I knew that going into it. Nice. All right. So once again, the Gaming Outsider 2019 Game of the Year is Control from Remedy. But Grant, we also want to hear your top games of the year. So what are your top five personal favorite games of 2019? Yeah, I, uh, man, I didn't play enough games last year. Like I played a number, but there's a lot I didn't finish and there's a lot I just missed, especially big ones. But these are, these are what I consider to be my favorite from last year. Number five, Blazing Chrome. Did anybody play Blazing Chrome? Yep. I loved it. I bleed it. I've beaten it like five times. Wait, is that uh, the one we played Yeah, last the- weekend? Feels it's like a, a cross game. between Contra and uh, Metal Slug. Mm-hmm. 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 
Uh, I love it. I love the music. Play, plays tight. It's not particularly long, but I've played through it. When I don't know what to play, I can just put that on and play a few levels, and I just love nice. it. Nice. So that's cool. That's there. I have not finished uh, Fallen Order, like I said, but I put it on here at number four because I can't. I've enjoyed it so much so far. I feel like if I had to stop now, it would still be number four for me. Uh, and maybe it'll be higher, but I can't make it higher because I haven't finished. I don't know where it's going, but I love it too much right now to not put it on there. Uh, number three, Luigi's Mansion 3. Oh, okay. Uh, I loved it. I completed it. It's so charming. It's super polished. Uh, it's gorgeous. It's like this. I was trying to describe to someone why I love it so much. And I have this. I love um, tidying. Like, I love putting things in order and tidying up. I also love destruction in games. And that is basically all Luigi's Mansion is, is going into a room and destroying everything. And then once it's all destroyed, tidying up and, and sucking it all up into your vacuum cleaner. <laughs> it's that over and over and over again for like 15 hours. Uh, so, super fun. Uh, number two, Ape Out. Oh, that's a great game. Uh, a another one that I just can always go back to. I can just go back and play that over and over again. Um, I still have not beaten the prologue because it's just too hard, uh, but I'm getting there. Really good game, really cool style, and number one, Resident Evil 2 for me. Oh, nice. I know you played through that. You just made Stoy from the EXP cast very excited because he was all clamoring oh, really? that that needed to be our number one game of the year. But Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I played, th played through it once and then played through it a second time. Uh, I'm not m one for second playthroughs, but really wanted to see um, Leon's story. So did it with a guide. It was just a way to kind of blast through super quick, see how quick we could do it. Mm -hmm. um, but And also see the Ada story, which is a part of Leon's campaign. So loved it. So those are my top five. Very cool. Would you guys like to hear what our community's top picks were for the year? Yes. Yeah. Let's do it. Uh, so I pulled the community uh, this past weekend and uh, asked them what their top five favorite games of the year. And for number five, we had a tie. And that tie was between Days Gone and Resident Evil 2. I was surprised to see Days Gone up that high. Yeah, I'm excited to see Days Gone that high. Yeah. Number four went to Control. Uh, there Whoa, was a, okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I just... There was a tie for number two and number three with uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare and The Outer Worlds. That tied for second and third. And then the number one game was Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. I'd like to congratulate our community on getting it right when we couldn't. <laughs> they have spoken. <laughs> they... This is the way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's, let's look at 2020. What are your most anticipated games for the year, Chris? Uh, Doom Eternal. Mm -hmm. uh, Resident Evil 3. And the Intellivision Amico. You were so stoked for that thing. I am. Nice. Him and Tommy Tellerico. So uh, For me, Final Fantasy VII Remake. I am so beyond excited to play that game. Just That music just gets me going. I, I can't wait. I really hope we get that one early, because that would make my day. Grant? Uh, a couple indie things on here. There's one called 12 Minutes, which I'm excited about. It's kind of like a Groundhog Day uh, experience. You just go look up the trailer for 12 minutes and you'll see what it's about. There's one called, I think it's called pronounced Carry On, but it's basically you play, it's sort of a Metroidvania-ish thing, pixel art but you play as the, you play as the bad guy. You're this sort of pulsating, yeah. uh, bloody tentacle mess that sort of crawls through the underbelly of this world and kills heroes. I remember seeing that uh, trailer. I, I thought that was out for some reason. No, it's, it's not. Yeah, it's supposed to be out next year. It's been like in process for a while, and it got people's attention a year and a half ago or so, but they're finally getting ready to put it out. It looks kind of Dead cells -y in terms of the art style, yeah. but the, it looks really neat. It's out next year. I put uh, Ori, Will of the Wisps. I'm really excited for the new Ori game. I love the first one. Uh, and I swear they're going to put that Metroid Prime trilogy out for Switch. <laughs> I'm convinced it's real, and it's coming. Maybe that's more of a prediction, but I feel like it's all but been confirmed, so... I really want them to put the Prime Trilogy out for Switch. I think that'd be super cool. I want four. So. Well, I want four too, but they started over. I mean, they're doing it right. So yeah. I'm but willing I mean, to give them some time. What better way to market four than with the release of the trilogy? Yeah. I feel that's, a, that's the whole thing is maybe it was planned for sooner than now. And now that everything's been pushed back, so is this. So we'll see. They're just sitting I on it. It's right there. We could be playing it right now. It's right there. You know it is. <laughs> you know it's right there. And the, oh, oh, well. All right. And Zach. Oh man, jump the gun. Uh Final Fantasy VII remake, of course, looks great. Mm -hmm. Ghost of Tsushima is uh, another one I'm looking forward to. 
Uh, Marvel's Avengers, I hope to lose a whole lot of time with. I hope that's um, good. Yeah, well, we liked the demo that we saw. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm actually really excited for League of Star Wars, the Skywalker saga, because what I saw behind closed door looked almost impossible. Uh, but Doom Eternal is definitely number one. Mm. I still got to put the first one. one. I, I, I haven't. I don't have an excuse. No, it's so <laughs> yeah, good. You don't. It's really good. It's tremendous. So, it's just so fun. It's just so fun. I the love music, the music, man. Yeah, yeah it just makes you want to rip and tear, which is its job. So, isn't there a song on the soundtrack called "Rip and Tear"? <laughs> it's like the first, yeah, oh. like the first level. Well, the, of music. I think. The first line of the game is "Rip and Tear until it is done." Ah, well, that would make sense then. Well, that was a fun 2019, guys. Uh, before we get out of here, do you, do you guys? Well, here, let's do this first. Uh, so I got some new Facebook members to say hello to CJ Moore and Freddie Munoz. Welcome to the group over there. No new Discord members, but if you would like to join the community over there, uh, be sure to look for the link on the show notes for this episode. We actually have a little contest going on over there uh, for activity in Discord to win a, a, a gift card. So you want to head over there. No new iTunes reviews, but we have lots of written reviews available for you over at the website. I've got my review of Don't Die Minerva up there, CB's review of The Climb, Thomas's review of She Sees Red, my review of Touring Carts and Shovel Knight, King of Cards, CB's review of Jamestown, and then my review of Williams Pinball Volume Volume 5, as well as Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, and Ski Jumping Pro VR. Those are all available on the website, thegamingoutsider.com, so be sure to check those out. Do you guys want to, uh, we're, we're over two hours, do you guys want to just push the games till next week? Or yeah. do you want to go ahead and talk about them? Yes. All right. I think that, I think that makes a lot of sense. We'll come back next week and talk about, uh, CB's been playing a game called Jamestown, and uh, we've got some pre-recorded reviews for you as well. So we'll we'll get those in for you next week because we're running a little long already. So that's going to go ahead and do it for this episode of The Gaming Outsider. Grant, thanks so much for being our guest this week, man. Oh, it's a pleasure. I love hanging out with you guys. And it's if it's uh, it's great to do it at least once a year. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to meeting yeah, you in person, man. Yeah, I'll get out there. We'll we'll find a reason to round up and play some games. And oh, hang. that'd be that'd be cool. Yeah. That'd that would be, be very cool. <laughs> I'm glad you approve of that idea, yeah. Zach. No, no, he's just, no, no. He, he lives in that's Kansas City, light. so he's that's my green light to come visit. Yeah, no, I, I'll, I'll try to find my way to you. That'd be cool. Hey, you worked on the Steven uh-huh. Universe, and I like that quite a bit. So, yeah, yeah, that's that's still good. that's still happening. Yeah, I think we need to make this happen more often than our Game of the Year episode. You gotta just come on 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 a regular episode and just chat with us for a while. I'm in one of these weeks when uh, CB has to you know drive an ambulance and isn't available. We should just have you on. Yeah. yeah, there you go. He's being annoying, saving lives out there. <laughs> hey, hey, man! Somebody's got to do it. Unfortunately. So, uh, where could our listeners follow you and your work? Uh, I'm on social media stuff at Stemage, and then I my most all the most recent stuff I've worked on and everything's kind of listed on StemageMusic.com. So you may want to spell Stemage uh, for the audience. S T S T E M A G E Music.com stuff's there i'm working on game music stuff at the moment i'm still working on steven universe music got some other original stuff in, in the works so things are things are happening it's gonna be a busy year i hope you got a bunch so. of stuff you're probably not allowed to talk to us about huh yeah there's a there's a number of stuff i can't th- I, yes all right i understand man <laughs> yes. i mean no i mean yes <laughs> did you know apparently it is illegal to even say there's an nda for something i didn't even realize that wow oh really uh oh, yeah. I've messed up. That's right. <laughs> I've been fired. No. Damn. It should be, it should be a good year for good good year for uh, stuff I'm working on and a good year for the the go cast. So cool, man. Well, looking forward to this year. It was uh, genuinely fun to chat with you, man. I'm looking forward to uh, 2020 working with you, working with you more. And totally. yeah, thanks for the music. Of course. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. So much fun. Zach, any parting words or recommendations for the listeners? Oh man. Sleep, everybody. Don't undervalue sleep. <laughs> Let me tell you, you open a you open up a cafe from nothing to fully operational in three days. You lose some sleep. Uh, bl- I believe it. I believe it. CB, what about you? Um, not a whole lot, but I'm I'm gonna make a prediction right now for myself. I'm going to complete two game system collections this year. GameCube wow. and 
GameCube, and I haven't decided what the other one's going to be, but I'm going to finish two this year because I didn't Nita. finish. Ooh, God, that's a tall order. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I, I felt kind of slacking after finishing a bunch the previous year and then last year not finishing one. So, uh, yeah, 20, 29 left to go on GameCube. So Nice, nice. Well, uh, everybody else, if you'd like to check out uh, some other work I do, I'm also one of the co-hosts of the Packers Fan Podcast. So if you're a fan of football and or the Green Bay Packers, please be sure to check that one out. But thanks so much for listening to The Gaming Outsider. Please be sure to email us if you have any questions or concerns. Our address is feedback at thegamingoutsider.com. Until next week, I'm Scott Clark with Zach Parkerson and Chris Behrensmeyer, and we are The Gaming Outsider. And remember, there's no such thing as a bad game, just games that aren't for you. Thank you.